Welcome to Zygo. Uh, my name is Marco Sanchez and I'm the current artist in residency. My central theme of my residency is dance from like the traditional cumbias or mambo that pachucos used to dance or still dance mambo and like uh, classics like in rock and roll to the more contemporary sort of cumbia colombiana that the cholombianos dance like in the northern part of Mexico and Monterrey and the state of Nuevo León but also to stuff that is sort of non-conventional like bullfighting, cockfighting and like an annual bare knuckle fighting bit that happens in like central Mexico and I don't and that like many traditional like ancestral Mesoamerican cultures has to do with the harvests. Five of these members, dance members, ritual members, um, and they climb a pole that is about five, not mistaken, it's 25 meters in height. There's a central head figure, and then there's four accompanying on the outside, where they're playing a wind instrument, and again, just to call on the rain to um, come and bless their crops. Um, they do a bit of that, and the four guys on the outside, there's a beam with a platform up top, and they're all suspended, and they're all tied around their waist and like a leg. And the platform starts gyrating, and when they lean back, they just start a slow descension, gyrating. Um, and it's supposed to be 13 full gyrations of each person, like in its axis. Um, four times 13, 52, so the 52 weeks of the year and one for each season. Um, they're often taught off as like Birdman and an accompanying symbol is either a peacock or a crow or just any other bird. But um, I just wanted to play a bit with just enlarging the scale and just giving, you know, full attention to one of the figures. So our next piece is um, Sancudos. And this I first experienced two summers ago in Oaxaca in Villa Sachila, which is uh, where we go, my colleagues from back home, Horn Toad Prince, we go and do plenty of work out there at Taller Grafica Libre. Um, and when I got there, I didn't know that I was there during their second biggest fiesta del pueblo or like pueblo party. And it's to honor St. Peter. And the story of this that I vaguely remember, I need to do a bit more research and talk to them and just ask uh, one of the Sancudo trainers, uh, you know, that keeps on passing this tradition, is that St. Peter came to, like, um, one of the elders, like, in a dream, and say, hey, you need to do this pilgrimage, there's going to be a rain and a flood, and you need to come to this place. Um, and them not having the capacity to, like, swim that far or, like, build boats, um, and this man decided to make these stilts and take the pilgrimage through the water that, in that way. Um, so that's what this is. And, and when I got to Oaxaca, they did this for a full week um, where they would take, uh, they call it a calenda, and it's uh, a walk, and they're dancing. There's a band accompanying, and there's another type of dance, but Danza de la Pluma, like the feather dance. And they're walking and every like three blocks or so, they like stop, the band just keeps playing and they're just going around dancing in their stilts. And they do this for about five hours without ever taking them off, um, which I think was pretty amazing. So um, again, one of the things that really struck out or stuck out was just how high some of these guys are. They're like on stilts that are six feet high. Um, 
and didn't see one guy fall in like a five mile trek for about five hours. Tauromachia, I'm not quite sure on the title yet, but something about Tauromachia or Tauromachi and that, you know, obviously thinking about Goya, non-conventional dance forms. Um, and again, just trying to play with, I guess in a way, simplification, separation of different symbols that encompass violent, um, quote unquote, art forms like bullfighting, uh, cockfighting, and then again, the that annual tradition, that bare knuckle boxing that happens in central Mexico. And I, there's two hands on the top left of this image. And those are the hands of a bullfighter that was getting gorged. Uh, the bull that's actually gorging him is down here, sort of coming in and out of one of the figures, the figure that's throwing a punch, so sort of alluding to that defense uh, slash attack. So just thinking about the violence of what a lot of people, including the Mexican culture, thought of as like a poetic art artistry, like, and that, that machismo and bravado, that's complete bullshit behind it too. <laughs> My grandfather used to have a bunch of these when I was growing up and he had them because he loved them and he loved their plumage and just they're beautiful creatures and uh, he hated them fighting, just like he hated the bullfighting, you know, and maybe that's where I get the fact that I don't like bullfighting or cockfighting, and he was actually a painter and printmaker as well. His name was Guillermo Cordero, um, and honestly, he's the reason why I'm doing what I'm doing. Like magic, this play was almost all the way wiped because Juliet, the shop tech, was helping me, kind enough to help me both wipe and be my clean hands with paper. Um, so yeah, big thanks to Julia. Just gonna polish a tiny bit and we're ready to go. In collaboration with a photographer a colleague of mine from El Paso and his name's Federico Villalba. And he took this picture in Lincoln Park in central El Paso and it's right underneath an overpass. It's got beautiful like Chicano and Mexican American murals that are meant to honor our heritage. But what this piece is about, it's sort of taken back to the suit suit riots that happened in California in 1943, where a group of sailors, you know, uh, the Navy came and docked. And when they came into the larger cities, they saw a lot of Chicano or Mexican American teenagers and young adults wearing these vestments, wearing these garments, a suit suit style, which was at some point during the war deemed un-American and that it was unpatriotic because they t the vestments took so much fabric that, you know, they thought like all oh, this fabric could be used for the war efforts and you're not being patriotic by using all this. Drunken sailors got, you know, upset and started harassing um, both men and women, the Chicanos or and and from harassment came the beatings, and from the beatings came the police. And you know, the police did what the police are doing now. They started attacking uh, the people of color instead of, you know, diffusing the situation. They started arresting, beating, and even some of the um, pachucos or Chicanos or Mexican-American kids started. Some of them were even killed. Another etching, and it has to do with cumbias, and it's three cumbias. Uh, you know, there's like there's subgenres of every type of music. This is sort of cumbia that is just reminiscent of like what my parents used to dance, or not my parents personally, because they don't really like that music, but the people my parents' age <laughs> um, or older, and. It's a lot slower and more, in a way, romantic and, you know, to be danced, like, together. So there's that, and there's a couple that are meant to represent that type of cumbia. There's a boot that's, like, the pointy boots that became really popular, I want to say, about 12 years ago. And they're really over the top. And that cumbia, it's called, like, cumbia tribalera. And again, those boots, it's, like, the pointier, the lengthier, the longer the, the point of the boot or the snout of the boot, the better. Um, that type of cumbia has a lot of like electronic mu music into it. And, and then the larger figure that's encompassing this image, it's uh, they call them Cholombianos. And it's a 
cumbia colombiana, which again started sort of in Colombia and then moved to Mexico City. But then it was really in Monterrey, Nuevo León, um, where just a bunch of young kids and DJs just made it their own. And just any other regular traditional cumbia song, like they included a lot of Peruvian um, sort of chimba or sonidero and cumbias, but they sort of slowed it down to like 80%, so the songs were a lot slower, and, and the music's really cool. The dancing is pretty cool too. It's, the vestments are really neat. They're usually like oversized, really baggy. Their aesthetic is completely like out there. Their hairstyles are really, really wild. And there's a really good movie that this guy is, the central figure is about, and it's called Yo No Estoy Aquí, or I Am No Longer Here. It's on Netflix. I'm plugging stuff. I don't know if I can do that. But um, you should watch it uh, just so you can get a sense of the music as well, if you're not familiar. Uh, great shop, really accommodating staff. The apartment upstairs is great. Um, if you don't apply, you're, you're missing out. Uh, I'm done with my time here. But great place. Just thankful for, to Zygo, Diana, Juliet, and everybody for having me.